Greetings loved ones. Today we're going to talk about why you should document abuse. Help us get these messages out. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell and please share these messages with others because you never know, just by doing so, you could save a life. Many women find themselves in a situation of domestic abuse and do not know what to do. We've discussed the forms of violence, the effects, and many other themes within domestic abuse. And today, I want to discuss why it is important to collect evidence in your abusive situation, how to collect evidence and document your abuse, as well as how to testify in your court case. Abuse is about power and control. It's time to give back the power to those who suffer abuse. Again, we have wonderful articles and information from DomesticShelters.org. You should check out their website. So the first question is, why should you document abuse? Because your records may be allowed as evidence in court. Keeping a diary of domestic violence incidents, both physical and non-physical, may seem like the last type of record a survivor would like to collect. But the truth is, this type of documentation can be an integral part of your case when it comes time to file charges, file for divorce, or file for custody of your children. According to womanslaw.org, another good organization you should check out, each state has its own laws about what evidence is permissible in court. It's best to talk to an attorney or legal advocate prior to your court hearing to learn more about your state's laws. In the meantime, Recording and gathering the following types of documentation can benefit you. Verbal accounts of the abuse from you and any witnesses. This can include not only physical abuse, but also verbal abuse, stalking, financial, reproductive, or spiritual abuse. Ask these witnesses if they would testify on your behalf in court. You can subpoena a witness, which will force them to appear in court. You can visit womanslaw.org for more information on this process. Another form of evidence is medical reports of injuries from the abuse. Ask your doctor about safe ways they can make notes about this abuse. For example, some doctors can write cause of injury on your medical records without the report having to go to the police. Another thing is pictures of any injuries from abuse documented with the date the photo was taken. Then there's police reports from when you or any witnesses called the police. Then there's objects in your home that are broken by the abuser. Photos showing your home in disarray after a violent episode. You can also take pictures of weapons used by the abuser to harm or threaten you. And a personal diary or calendar in which you documented the abuse as it happened. This could also include a stalking log. Then there's digital evidence. Let your abusers or stalkers threatening calls go to voicemail and then save those voicemails. Save emails, save threatening texts, save screenshots of 30 missed calls in a row, etc. And finally, make sure the place in which you choose to save these items is a safe one. Don't keep this evidence in the same home you share with your abuser. Keep it at a friend's or a family member's house, in a safe deposit box, or at your place of employment and listen to your gut. If it's not the right time to compile this evidence because your safety will be at risk, hold off. Know that what's safe for one person may not be safe for you. And when you're dealing with courts and crimes, it is evidence that makes the case strong. While testimony can help, it can also become a he should, he said, she said situation and not be as clear to the judge as it needs to be. However, if you have recordings of threats on your voicemail, text save of multiple attacks in your phone, screenshots of abuse on social media accounts, photos of your bruisers and other wounds, as well as photos of the disorder in your house, recordings, video or audio of the actual events, and a journal logging the events, as well as witness testimony, you can make your case solid for the judge to see the truth about what is happening to you. With one in three women experiencing domestic violence worldwide and 15 million children experiencing it every year, the question is not if you will encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is what will you do 
when you do encounter them. You could be the person who saves a life. You are called. We are all called to be champions for justice. And those who suffer violence need to know that those who love them and those who don't even know them will step out and reach out to them to give them the courage and the help they need to leave before it's too late. Help us get the messages out. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. And please share these messages with others. If you're a victim of violence, please listen to me. I want you to know the truth. You are valued. You are loved. You are intelligent and you are beautiful. God does not want you to suffer violence. He wants you to live free from violence and peace and tranquility. You're not alone. There is a way out. It's not your fault. And abuse is not love. If you're a victim of violence, please reach out to someone today. If you find yourself in a dangerous situation, please call 911 for help. And if you know of a child suffering violence, tell the authorities. In our next episode, we're going to talk about how to collect the evidence of abuse. And so until then, God bless you.